Okay, so the deviate behind the heel star. I just want to go over something. Um, in terms of where your feet and the bell is when you start. So there's, there's two, two different things um, that you can kind of fall into as a trap. When you're thinking behind the heels, you might start to think you know, behind the heel, so it, it gets quite far back. And when that happens, two things will happen. You will either come really far down here, and then shoulders and hips will be in line with each other, or even um, shoulders will be in the low hips, which is what we don't want because that's loads of pressure on the lower back, and it's not giving us that, that loaded spring um, effect that we're looking for because there's just loads of extra pulling you have to do. You've got to go from there to there before you can get that, that hinge position. So just a reminder, we've got, we've got knees, then we've got hips above knees, then we've got shoulders above hips, and this is a hinge. This is, this is where we are, this is where we do our deadlifts from, this is where we do our swings from. Okay? Second thing that can happen if the belly is too far back, if we've got it into our head far behind heels, is that it's, it's quite far away, so we, we squat down into it. So we've got our shoulders above our hips, but we've got our hips in line with our knees or even below them. Same thing's going to happen. We've got to extend there before we can even start to get that really explosive hinge movement. Okay, so there's two things um, I'm seeing happening. So to fix it, to fix most things, come back to your feet. So yes, the bell's behind the heels. Elevate it if you can. I know the yoga blocks are really annoying to do it with. So you can you can just shuffle your, your body around a little bit. Have the bell behind your heels, not necessarily that far behind your heels. So it's behind my heels, I am hinging back. I'm gonna grab the bell from a behind the heels position. Okay, it's just, it's just there, just slightly behind my heels. With that, I can make sure that I've got, and this is the thing that I think we're, we're forgetting about. We need that connection between your upper arm and your rib cage and your torso. So there's no gap there at all, completely closed. So I close that gap, my forearm is touching my hip, glued together, okay? That was a gluing noise, not just me making a new noise. Okay, so you're going to hinge back, hold the bell, pull it slightly forwards, then think, oh hang on, what, what's going on here? I've lost that connection, or I'm, I'm leaning forward, or I'm squatting down to reach it, how can I fix that? Maybe I need to come back a little bit more towards the bell, so yes, it's still behind my heels, or maybe I need to come forwards a bit, it's still behind my heels, yeah, good, have I got the connection? Yeah, good, uh, have I got shoulders above, hips above knees? Yeah, good. Um, I'm looking at myself in the camera so I can see, but it'll probably be worth watching yourself in the mirror or pausing yourself, or just like turning the camera on so you can see yourself and then messing around a little bit. I think that I'm going to need that elevated a little bit. I very rarely do not elevated somehow, even if I'm just taking it um, up once. So yeah, and then it's much easier. I don't have to. Uh, I don't have to put too much effort into either lifting my shoulders first or coming out of the squat first before I'm ready to explode. Okay? One more thing I've just thought of, actually, is on the way down, what's happening is we are there, as we come down, we're watching the bell, and we come down here. And here we are again in this shoulders down position, okay? So, we're keeping our eyes forward. When we come down, it's just like in a swing. We want to keep this chest pointed forwards. Appreciate it's really, really hard to find the thing behind you um, when the knees are. So, let's try again. Coming up from there and back down. Okay? Keeping your chest forward the whole time. Very good.